Hi, it's Jim, the Iowa Tesla guy. I'm back for another video. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a completely unscientific long range test of my Model Y. And specifically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be driving from where I'm located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, down to a supercharger in Davenport, Iowa. It's about 90 miles. On the way down there, I'm going to be going exclusively interstate, at least as much as possible. I'm gonna be driving the speed limit and I'm going to see what my efficiency is or how many watt hours per mile my car is driving on the way down. But then on the way back, I'm going to take some scenic roads and that are primarily uh, in town or 55 miles an hour. And I'm also going to then compare what is the watt hours per mile for that trip back just to see exactly how much difference there is between the two and is it really worthwhile uh, spending a little extra time going slower to get to your destination to save on energy and then I'm going to share with you what I figure out so let me show you what route we're going to take all right so I'm going to go ahead and select superchargers and then select Davenport supercharger and it's doing some thinking and it's going to actually want to take us down a route that is not interstate. But what we're going to be doing here, we're actually going to come come out and around down uh, 380 and then across I-80 over to the supercharger. And then on the way back, we're going to take another completely different route, which is kind of snakes up around here into these smaller towns. Uh, ends up, it's basically Highway um, 130 and then into Tipton and then up to Highway 30 and then across and then back home. And then we're gonna see um, exactly what the difference in efficiency is and I'll be happy to share with you. And then also while we're driving, we may do some testing on those back roads to show you just how much autopilot does auto steer for you and see how well it handles some of the uh, more tighter turns. So let's uh, hit the road and I'll report back uh, when we get to our destination. All right, that's the route we're going to take uh, down and back. And um, the elevation change here in Iowa is pretty much uh, flat. Um, there are some hills here and there, but there isn't really an elevation change. So I realized that coming back might be different if it was completely uphill versus downhill. But uh, overall, I think things will be pretty good. Again, completely non-scientific, but, you know, real world, we don't operate uh, in scientific manner. So I'm just going to see what happens and uh, report what I find. All right, we made it to our destination. We went uh, 92.4 miles, consumed 27 kilowatt hours, and our average was uh, 291 watt hours per mile. We'll admit that we were uh, driving about five miles an hour over the speed limit uh, on the way down, and we'll probably be doing something similar on the way back. 
Um, so highway, uh, part one, 291 watt hours per mile. And I guess we'll see what happens on the way back home. We made it back on the back road trip and here's how things ended up on the way back it was actually shorter but slower um, we did 75.1 miles and consumed 18 kilowatt hours of energy with an average watt hour per mile of 240 so it was uh, less as expected um, compared to the way down so how does this all settle out? Well, I've got to go back inside and do some math and then I'll report back on how things all stacked up. All right, so I've crunched the numbers and let's see where everything shakes out. So let's just recap what we know so far. So on the interstate down, we went 92.4 miles, consumed 27 kilowatt hours and we had an average watt hour per mile of 291 watt hours per mile. And on our highway roads back, we were going slower, but it was shorter, um, 75.1 miles, 18 kilowatt hours consumed at an average of 240 watt hours per mile. So um, what does that all mean? Well, the first thing that I want to consider is, is if I had done uh, an entire zero to 100 percent at each one of these uh, efficiency rates, what would that mean for overall miles? So with the efficiency rate of what I had for interstate, I calculated I could go a total of 257 miles on a zero to 100 percent charge. Now, on the highway on the way back, it calculates out to about 313 um, miles of total uh, range at that level. So that is about a 56 mile difference in range between interstate and highway speeds. And that's not insignificant. So in looking at this one trip and this one trip only, I went 167 and a half miles. Now, if I had gone that entire trip on interstate and, and gone over the same amount of miles, I would have consumed 48.7 kilowatt hours. Now, if I had also gone that entire distance on highway miles or highway speeds, I would have consumed 40.2 kilowatt hours, which is a total savings of this trip of 8.5 kilowatt hours by going on the highway now if you look at this based on cost that cost at a supercharger rate of 26 cents per kilowatt hour gives me a cost savings of this trip going on the highway of two dollars and 22 cents so is it worth it 
I guess it really kind of depends on your situation. And if I were able to do that charge at home, the cost savings would be even less, or for me about half of that. So we're a little over a dollar. So going slower does definitely increase your range. It really doesn't save you a lot of money. This is my absolute non-scientific uh, method for comparing interstate versus highway. There is a savings. There is a difference. It does improve your range if you're going slower. So if you have a long trip and you want to maximize your range, going slower does definitely get you there with a little more confidence and definitely a lot more range. So hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, it really helps drive the channel. Also, if you're looking to get 1,000 free supercharger miles, if you're gonna buy a Tesla, make sure you use a referral code, any code. If you wanna use mine, that's great. So thanks for watching. And until next time, happy driving.